weather seems nice today. And with that in mind, what did I read today? I guess reading this story made me think how it seems like in the US, so many companies are getting beyond visual line of sight approval to fly drones. Is it all okay now, for example, with all the big companies doing it? This one says, Aslan receives first of their kind DVLOS waivers for automated security drone system. It sounds like this relates to what I wondered before where with a lot more drones being in a box solution per se, it's all automated. How is that gonna work in terms of licensing and all that? Is it just gonna be okay, whatever, just do it afterwards once you get, I guess, their approval? This one says, Aslan Inc., the leading air and ground robotic security company in the United States, announced today that the Federal Aviation Administration has granted them three beyond visual line of sight waivers for their automated security drone in a box system and service. These three waivers account for four initial sites around the US and their award is a testament to Aslan's commitment to data, safety, and achieving the right results the right way. Aslan initially partnered with the FAA in February of 2020 through the Uncrewed Aerial System Integration Pilot Program, now known as the BEYOND program. When they deployed their automated drone sentry system at Memphis International Airport for FedEx Express, Aslan's entire flight operation from takeoff through landing and battery swap are completely automated and remotely managed. To date, Aslan has completed more than 20,000 automated patrol and alarm response missions in the United States with their drone core system. Would this kind of explain why they are approving this per se? It says the systems are being used to deter crime and detect potential issues like theft, fire, or active shooters while providing real-time intelligence to security teams. Further, as a robotic security platform with various sensors integrated, it has investigated and cleared thousands of false alarms, a problem that plagues already short-staffed security teams. And a comment here says, former acting administrator of the FAA and Aslan Advisory Board member, Dan Elwell said, there are only a few dozen companies in the world who have achieved what Aslan has just done here. Of the few who have received these BVLOS waivers, I do believe Aslan is different. The security use case is perfect. The remote operations are built out. The process developed with securing this last waiver is scalable. And the sheer number of automated flights Aslan has done to prove the safety case is incredible. I'm confident that with this team, the technology is just a start. So expect to see, I guess, more drone in a box solutions in these ways. Again, it's just kind of funny where all of a sudden it's okay in these instances, but in other situations where someone could be flying a quote toy around a tree, that's a big no-no for whatever reason. And this was everywhere here today. Apparently here in Canada, they're gonna drop some, I guess, vaccine mandates for things like travel and it says federal employees. It says here, Ottawa announces suspension of vaccine mandates for domestic travel, federal employees. The federal government has announced the suspension of vaccine mandates for federal employees and for passengers wishing to board a plane or train in Canada. Federal employees and transportation workers in federally regulated sectors will no longer have to be fully vaccinated as a condition of their work. Those on unpaid administrative leave because of their vaccination status will be invited to return to work. Starting June 20th, vaccines will no longer be required for travelers in Canada. Canadian citizens entering the country from abroad will still be required to meet entry requirements and masks will remain mandatory for those boarding planes or trains in Canada. Visitors to Canada will have to be fully vaccinated to enter the country or meet the requirements of exemption. Although this is a key point here because I guess when people read this initially they'll assume okay it's gone but it says here they're just suspending it per se. It says Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs Dominic LeBlanc told reporters that while some mandates are being suspended, the federal government will bring them back if the COVID-19 situation changes for the worse. So it makes you wonder there, for people who feel it's time to move on, is this one of those things where they're not really getting rid of it? It's more about the situation because I read it in places like the airports, I believe places in Ontario, it's crazy like with the procedures and all that, understaffed. So is this just like a temporary thing Say, okay, we need this now, so let's lift this, but we'll bring it back afterwards. So will people be okay with that per se? To me, it doesn't really make sense, like this passport stuff per se in the airports at this moment in time, in terms of all the data and things I've been reading. For example, at this point, since they say everyone can get it and spread it, I would imagine everyone must have had 
some kind of exposure to like to say the virus by now so that doesn't make sense in terms of keeping it it almost feels like it is one of those things i know like we love this i don't know control or something like that so let's keep it the way it is and we can't admit or whatever that it's time to move on per se it just feels that way anyways personally and i read this which was kind of interesting any creatives out there that use photoshop those applications are really expensive but apparently they're gonna offer I guess a version for free and they're testing it here in Canada. It says here, Adobe plans to make Photoshop on the web free to everyone. For now, it's testing a freemium version in Canada. Adobe has started testing a free to use version of Photoshop on the web and plans to open the service up to everyone as a way to introduce more users to the app. The company is now testing the free version in Canada where users are able to access Photoshop on the web through a free Adobe account. Adobe describes the service as freemium and eventually plans to gate off some features that would be exclusive to paying subscribers. Enough tools will be freely available to perform what Adobe considers to be Photoshop's core functions. I personally don't like all those cloud subscriptions and all that. I'd rather just buy the software like they were way back and then you keep it forever unless you want to upgrade to a newer version afterwards. But either way, I guess if it's free, it could be good for people who want to use the application and all that. See you guys later.